Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Business Guru Morning Routine Show. It is 8 a.m. and it is time to live like Grant Cardone, which we started doing two hours ago. Uh, yeah. How's everyone doing? I'm fantastic. I actually like this routine, but I don't know how like we're following Grant Cardone because he doesn't actually say much or much online that's that's practical and he's constantly changing what he does to sell more because <laughs> right. he wants so, to relate to everyone um so we have um a couple videos we can watch and review and react to of grant cardone talking about his morning routine because he's that's the thing he's kind of inconsistent about it some morning routines he, they start at six sometimes he says he wakes up at four we're not going to wake up at four regardless. Like that's just not happening here. So we're waking up at six for this morning routine. Um, but yeah. Which Grant is so Cardone, doable. Yeah. I felt great waking up at six. I honestly did too. I, I woke up at six and I felt pretty good. I wanted my workout to be running with Chewy, but the roads were all ice or all the sidewalks were completely ice because most of the snow is melted. And so I slipped on all the ice and I just like fell into the, pavement really hard and I was like well I'm not running with Chewy anymore so I walked with Chewy and then lifted weights at home heck yeah yep I so, yeah woke up at six mm -hmm. had coffee yep read so I'm, I want to start reading the news as soon as I wake up now uh -huh. just to mm -hmm. get like so I feel like I'm not I, I want to be on the offensive not the defensive with my kids <laughs> news. um so I'm doing it as soon as I work out now instead of doing it after our streams Mm -hmm. uh, which is good. It helped wake me up a little bit. I did a five minute warm up and then I did yoga. Um, Aaron and I did five minutes of meditation together. I love it. Which felt great. Uh, I wrote down my goals. I 10 X those goals in my journal as well. So let's see how <laughs> close I get to them. I'm going to try and, you know, lose a hundred pounds and write 10 novels in a week. Excellent. You can do it. And then I posted a TikTok before our stream because I thought this is like we have to post because he says you have to like answer all your emails, which I did, yeah. and do social media. And uh, I just like, okay, you know what? I'm going to try this. I'm like the post one TikTok before every stream this week. Awesome. Yeah. So I woke up at six and then I ran, tried to run with Chewy and wiped out on the sidewalk and it probably was really funny. And then I came inside and lifted weights and then I took a shower and then... um then oh for social media posting i posted on my instagram story as i was doing the workouts and then from there i did not finish answering all my emails so i blocked in a little time after the stream to finish answering my emails because i did not get those done but i did get some social media planning done for forever home friend stuff which you and i will discuss after the stream cool very cool cool guys so this this is working out pretty well so far um, I think we do need to add a little more of a 10 X element into it, which I think could be like, cause Grant Cardone is so big on cold calling constantly and reaching out to 10 times as many people every day. So I think we could do like a, like reach out to 10 people every day kind of thing, either on like LinkedIn or over email or something like that. Which is great advice at its base. Yeah, he it is. Per <laughs> he perverts that advice like crazy. But oh, like, yeah. when I was building Follow the Hummingbird, I was basically doing that 10X rule of, of like I, I yeah. in order to get new clients, I would schedule three coffee meetings with complete strangers on LinkedIn mm -hmm. every single day. And I knew if I kept that routine going, I would close a new client every three and a half weeks. Right, so it's not right. horrible advice. It's just he expects, like, I don't know what he thinks your closing rate should be. He definitely overestimates. Uh, for anyone who is interested in starting a new business, specifically a service-based business, expect your closing rate to be around 1%. Uh, so for every 100 people you reach out to, you're going to get a yes. Um, That's he, what I expect I, for a sales-based business too, is that is a 1% conversion rate. Yeah. And if you beat it, that's fantastic, but just expect it. And that's, and yeah. um, so I don't know what he thinks. I thought I had a massive crack on my phone screen. I realized it was the background <laughs> of your, of your stream. So I don't know what he expects his close rate to be. I think he 10 X is it. And he expects his close rate to be a thousand percent. So like yeah. every person he talks to, he closes 10 clients. <laughs> <laughs> um, Hey, fire Brad, how's it go? Well, you and I are the same person. So you already have this jacket. We we've established this. <laughs> 
So take some comments, and then we're going to watch some videos of Grant Cardone's morning routine, which will be fun. Like, we are actually enjoying this morning routine, but it'll be fun to react to the videos because while he gives advice that's like, makes sense and is true on the surface, he's just so obnoxious about it to the point where it's like, how can anyone take him seriously? So he ruins it. Yeah, exactly. He's like, I love jalapenos. I love ice cream. Let's try mixing them together. That's Grant Cardone. <laughs> <laughs> Joseph's here. Good morning. Joseph says an hour and 15 minutes till lunch. Sounds awesome. I haven't eaten anything yet today. I need to eat in a little bit. Cartridge Gamer's like, hey, boss people, and stop picking your nose. Says, hello, boss babes of planet Earth. Kitty says, hey, hun. All right. Grant, Grant does have a punchable face. Thank God it's Grant. I was like, me? This guy has a... <laughs> I assume you mean Grant Cardone has a punchable face. Yeah, because the thumbnail's him punching the sun. Amanda says, good morning. I'm running super late today, which is funny because I was so excited about having extra time in the morning now that I don't have any hair. Oh, Amanda, you shaved your head recently, right? So Amanda also sent me an email this morning, which I need to reply to, but I didn't finish replying to emails yet this morning. So I'm going to do that after the stream. Harley Nicole Plans is here. Hello. Hello. Stop picking your nose says I'm doing great. Worked out, wrote and read some of Romancing the Beat by Gwen Hayes. Oh, that sounds fun. That sounds like a fun title. Oh, wait, where'd it go? I, oh yeah. So I still have this on too, just because I want to, even though it's past, I still have my, my Mardi Gras pin on. Oh, that's adorable. I love the Mardi Gras pin. Yeah. I wish Forever Own Friends had some Mardi Gras pins. I wish we did too. We don't have any pins. We just have stickers. Maybe I need to start getting pins made. Yeah, like Lindsay. She makes enamel pins. I wonder if I could hand make them. Like maybe I could 3D print them and then glue uh, the pin backing onto them. Uh, Jess, we are still good for today, but could you just send me a reminder of what time? Because it's not in my calendar and I do live by my calendar and I'm totally blanking. <laughs> Happy Monday, Karen. Wait, what did Jess say? Are you are you and Jess doing a podcast interview today? Yeah, everyone check out Savvy's interview on the Persuasion Pitch, by the way. Excellent. I'm, that'll be a great episode. Yeah, now, a lot be. of people love RK's jacket as well. <laughs> but, I, it was like only 30 bucks. It's fantastic. That's the coolest jacket of all time. Yeah. See, I, I mean, Cardone I think told us hand. we have to dress for success, so yeah. So, I, I mean, I think that's why I got it second hand but um i mean who cares it's clothing like as long as they didn't urinate in it which... who knows <laughs> <laughs> like like it depends on the bodily function some some you, i can get around some i can't <laughs> that's fair that's fair here okay so here are grant cardone's morning routines these are the two videos Smokes I've a cigar. watched before. <laughs> Not something, I think we need to smoke a cigar on one of these streams, although I think Tyler might get mad at me for smoking in the house because he I'm, has asthma. Also, so maybe I won't smoke a cigar. I don't know. I'm also in an apartment that like doesn't have windows that op can open. <laughs> so like, I don't feel like trapping tobacco smoke in here. <laughs> okay, so let's see. There's these two videos. Okay, this is the one I think that I watched first. This one is so obnoxious. It's hilarious. But this one is the one where he breaks it down by minute and like hangs out with his kids at 6.37 every morning. Every morning. <laughs> Which he definitely does not does not stick to. Um, let's see. Is, is the audio the coming through? Amazing yeah. family vacation. Okay. We don't need to watch ads. Okay. When I get up early, I feel better. I just feel better. Just feel Which again, better. it's going to be one of those things where it's true advice that he ruins. I beat the sun up, man. Yeah. I, I got up before the camera. Man. I beat the sun up, man. That's my favorite line of his when he beats the sun up. Oh, he works out at six a.m. We we worked out at six a.m. <laughs> Ooh, it's cold this morning. Dude, this is just him flaunting his wealth. This really is a video about him showing how rich he is. He just showed he had a home gym, a sauna, and a pool. That's it. I didn't do anything. All I did was get out of bed. Like, does he even live here or did he rent this? Time with the kids, 6.37 a.m. Wait, how long was his workout? He did a sauna and a swim. Goofy time, 6.43. Get dressed. 6.50. Why couldn't he just hang out with his kids at 6.43? Why was it a lone grandma, goofy time? Is that when he masturbates? <laughs> 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 All 
All right, here we go. Send the kids to school at seven. Wow, he spent all of seven minutes after waking up at six a.m. with this Beat the sun up. See, that didn't, that didn't hurt. All right. He I love this right this. here. And it just works. It works. We all He's, we all help each other. Rachel has an hour. You see, seven oh two, right there, seven oh two a.m. Rachel sets aside an hour to send her kids to school. Grant is like, I send my kids to school at seven. And I start working on my social media at 7.02. <laughs> You're such a good dad, Grant. I'm sure the kids love you. Well, it's, it's, I mean, he spent six minutes with his kids, 6.37 to 6.43. Because he has to goof around with a telescope. <laughs> six <laughs> goof around for a few minutes. <laughs> not with his kids. <laughs> not with his kids. I <laughs> hug you. Bye. Stay away. <laughs> time, and time with kids. Very vague. He was just like, let me lift this kid up. See, look, I have a kid. I know how to touch the kid as I pick them up. I know See, how I to know name's kid cat. Like a cat. <laughs> Dad, I'm not cat. We just have a cat. Shut up, cat. <laughs> That's Grant. <laughs> Oh, I forgot the breakfast time. I forgot to eat breakfast. Although, to be fair, his breakfast is just like a piece of fruit. She had a, a, a single apple slice. Yeah, this whole video is just, look how rich I am. I have a big car. My license is a 10x real. <laughs> <It's so obnoxious. laughs> Listen to the birds. <laughs> I'm assuming you meant the band. If it's a bad day, I'm going to turn it into a great day. Because that's what I do. The bad, some, of, some of the days that have started off bad for me have been the best days of my life. You just got to hang in there. You got to stay in there. You got to keep pushing and shoving and say, dude, I'm going to make a great Dude, this is Barney Stinson. This is, this is legit <laughs> Barney Stinson. I could turn yeah, this around. <laughs> oh, my God. Turn, turn enough bad days into great days, you'll end up with a great life. That's it, man. Nobody, they don't teach that in school. They don't teach you that in school, but when you I get turn bad days into good days. I choose to stop you so it can just be awesome instead. Thank you, Barney. He's Barney Stinson. It's, it's, it's now canon. Now he goes to the plane. He doesn't fly anywhere. He just has a phone. <laughs> he just goes to the plane to sit in it. And then to show off that he had access to a plane. We don't know. Wait, does he go anywhere in the plane? Does he? What? He's leaving for work. Why is work a plane? <laughs> I don't know. Savvy, we gotta get to like we looked it up yesterday, and we can get. We, so y'all, just for just you know, Savvy and I looked this up yesterday. You can rent a private jet for a photo shoot for as little as two hundred fifty bucks. So if you ever see a guru doing that, obviously don't trust them. Secondly, Savvy, one of these days when the pandemic's over and we can actually hang out together, we just got to go all out and have a photo shoot in front of like a Lamborghini oh, definitely. and a private jet. Oh, yeah. And yeah, yeah, we, we and, and sell our fake course. Oh, my God. We absolutely have to do that now. I'm super excited. So, OK, pandemic's over. You and I are going to meet up in person. We're going to get tattoos of my grandma's name on us. Yes. And then we're going to go do a photo shoot in front of a private jet and a Lamborghini. Yeah. And then, oh, my God. <laughs> Can we put the Lamborghini in the jet? Uh, uh, Maybe. Maybe that's an extra $250. Who knows? Because that, that, that would, like, 10x Ty Lopez. Just hanging out with my Lamborghini in my private jet. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Ty Lopez would have nothing on us. We would be the coolest gurus of all time. I feel like Grant thinks he's the rock Arnold Schwarzenegger and the like. Yeah, he does kind of seem like he has that energy. I like this. Gail says, good morning. Got the notification for the live stream right after finishing my morning ritual. So excited for whatever the fresh hell this dude's ritual is. So uh, that's what we just watched there. But I really like this video because I feel like he has some great quotes in it where he talks about how he likes to beat the sun up. We know he loves his kids for a solid six minutes. Six you guys minutes. are just getting started. He should You're 10x not start that. right here. You're gonna start. Yeah, why doesn't he spend 10x as many minutes with his kids? That's the real question, Grant. You could have spent 60 minutes with your kids. You could have spent the whole hour with your kids. Just a whole hour with your kids. That's all. <laughs> Firebrat says, I'm in the decimated travel biz, so I'll hook y'all up on the plane. All right. All right. Firebrat's the best. 
down there. Okay, probably in another city, another town. I grew up in Lake Charles, Louisiana. No money, raised by a single mother. neighbor. I was in debt at 25 years old. Let's check out. Oh, I love the 25 Grant Cardone, 25 year old Grant Cardone and his mustache. Like, look, look at that. That's a okay. look, dude. Two things. One, he obviously was doing drugs. Two, um, like, yeah. is it, I hate the fact that now he's. I don't know he's from Lake Charles. I'm like, ah, shit. Now I like him. Yeah, he's like, you guys are neighbors. <laughs> Five years old. The first thing that I had to do in my life was not learn a new skill. First thing I had to do to get my life moving in the right direction was self development. Self development, man. Vital. That's what we're it doing. Was vital for me. This whole program is self development. I to improve myself and I could start depending you gotta upon You got to talk like me. this from now I had on. To show up every day. Show up with every some day. Rituals, some disciplines and start getting myself to trust me. Not Anyone who listens to this on uh, Spotify recordings after the fact, instead of watching live on YouTube, that's going to be really fun for the, the audio. Just we're going to talk like this. For anyone <laughs> listening, this is the Grand studio Cardone audience. Grant only talks by <laughs> punching his other hand. How else is he going to toughen up his knuckles to beat up the sun? <laughs> <laughs> trust others, but trust myself to do the right thing every day. One of the things that I started doing was beating the sun up every morning. One, yeah, that's, one of the things I started doing, I was beating the sun up every morning. You got to beat it up. <laughs> you got to beat the sun up every morning. If you can't beat you up beat a star, who are you? Sun up every morning so that I had the discipline and the control of, over my life. So I knew, hey, before that thing pops, I'm going to pop. I'm going to get out of bed, <laughs> depend on myself. I knew 643 was masturbation time. I called it. I called it. <laughs> Goof off time is his self-play. <laughs> Some great quotes in this, right? He's like, I'm going to beat the sun up every morning. Before that thing pops, I'm going to pop. I'm going to beat the sun up, and then I'm going to beat the sun off. <laughs> This is a great question. Katie asks, how is learning a new skill not self-development? Exactly. He's like, it's not learning a new skill. It's about self-development. And it's like, pretty sure learning a new skill is developing yourself. Exactly. I think having such high amounts of toxic masculinity that you have to race the sun. That's his whole thing. I, I love this. And Mushroom Destroyer says, beat the sun, then beat your meat. Exactly. exactly. He's as alpha as they come. If, you, if you're not beating everything in your life, you're beta. <laughs> I just love how, like, you know, how, like, Rachel's like, I got to start the day on the offensive. This is such a business guru thing. He's like, I got to beat the sun up. If the sun wakes up before me, then I'm not winning against the sun. I've already started my day losing. I need That's to be an winning. Interesting thesis. If now divorced Rachel goes a bit more in the masculine direction with self help guru development, I think she has been. I think she kind of has been. Um, although uh, lately her content hasn't been as intense as before. So I don't know. Because she's not, she's not doing the, the, the have it all mom, which I know she also said is inherently, I, I don't know. Like she, 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 she's not going the family route anymore. So I'm wondering if she's going to go be the alpha male with no Y chromosome route. Yeah, dude, I think she should like, it would be insufferable and annoying, but like, that's probably the best route for her career. Like financially. get up at the same time every day and for me that time regardless of where i was was beat that sun up no beat matter where i am up. i'm gonna beat that thing up so it gives me a up. sense of control over my own life second thing i had to start cleaning up my life and my friends and my environment when i was younger between 15 and 25 i was doing crazy stuff in my life he wasting my weekends i have the same weekends are for the week. <laughs> Weekends are for the week. I love that saying. I made that one of the thumbnails because I just, I love it because it's uh, absolutely stupid. But <laughs> like I sleep in on the weekends, guys. Y'all, can you imagine just like laying on your deathbed and being like, man, I'm so glad I never took a single day off. <laughs> Weekends are for the week. I'm glad that I wasn't weak. I'm so glad I'm dying strong and spent six minutes a day with my kids. <laughs> Okay, to be fair, he spends eight minutes a day with his kids. Don't forget seven to seven oh two. Right, 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 right. Because he sends yeah. them off the screen. He sends his <laughs> wife out the door with his kids. Yeah, like I wonder how much but then his wife ends up on the plane with him. 
So I guess she runs the kids to school and then meets him at the airplane where they're flying to who knows where. Probably nowhere. They're probably just taking pictures of themselves in the airplane. I, mean. I don't take his self, I, I don't take his um, morning routine seriously because it just changes constantly to prove he's just the ultimate man. Like traveling is for the week. I just visualize myself somewhere new when I'm there. I manifest it. I need to find. Uh... I, I'm going to find the audio clip in, in the TEDx rule audio book. Cause it was one of my favorite things that I heard the other day while I was listening to it. And he was saying like, he had this great quote where one of his friends is like, calls him up and is like, Grant, my business is about to go under. I need 10,000 more dollars in order to keep my doors open. And Grant was like, are you watching the game right now? And he was like, yeah. And he was like, well, why are you watching the game when you need $10,000? And his friend was like, because it's Sunday. It's the day of rest. And Grant was like, the Lord wasn't talking to people who needed cash on the other six days, son. <laughs> Which, again, <laughs> is not horrible advice, but he makes it so awful. Like, he finds one obvious example of you should not be taking the day off and it's like now apply that to everything are you happy with your life stop it work harder for all the people in the comments speculating that grant is on cocaine in at least in his books he talked about how he used to be a cocaine addict until he was 25 and then he now he just dabbles went to rehab stopped doing drugs and then found the dianetics book the day he got out of rehab and scientology saved his life so, oh, we have to do Scientology shit this week, too. I forgot. <laughs> oh, yeah, I forgot. We can we... do all that live on stream. I'm not doing Scientology shit with my free time. <laughs> we'll do Scientology on the screen, on the stream. Um, so, yeah, and that and uh, he's all like a no substances kind of person. Does so, he do coffee? I don't know. I'm going to keep drinking coffee. I'm going to keep drinking coffee. I'm not going to drink alcohol this week. I drank a lot of alcohol last night, but I'm not going to drink alcohol this week because... Great. Cardone doesn't believe in substances, so no alcohol. Um, other than, like, I guess tobacco is fine because he smokes cigars constantly. Which um, is, a bit, it's sort of like Rachel with that alcohol, right? Yeah. Like, I don't drink except when I drink. Exactly, yeah. So, I, but just, to, just for the sake of my own self-development, I'm not going to drink alcohol this week. I'm going to still drink coffee. I have been grinding my own coffee beans, so I wish I had started grinding my own coffee beans last week when I had a schedule that had 10 minutes put in just to make the coffee, but I didn't. I started grinding my own coffee beans on Saturday. Look at you. Yeah. You're such a winner. Such a winner. So <laughs> you can I need to grind more much. beans because I, I ran out of grounds of the breakfast blend, so I need to go make more of those after this stream. I'm gonna. I'm gonna definitely have another cup of coffee today. I mean, I gotta say, Joe, I, I did enjoy this morning. Yeah, me too. Uh, Firebrat says, "At least you can quit cocaine. If you quit Scientology, they come for you." That's true, dude. That's true. That's true. That's true. Questionable Hag Energy says, "I know a lot of chiropractors and crunchy people like Cardone for being." anti-substance cigars weirdly don't apply yeah and the same people are like i am against substances cigars are fine though like okay <laughs> okay is it because you like don't fully inhale cigar smoke like you just keep in your cheeks and for some reason they're just like eh, she, like t tongue cheek jaw cancer doesn't count yeah maybe that's what it is um i do want to smoke a cigar this week though i'm pretty sure i have a cigar still in my house. Emily says, Grant would endorse you asserting your dominance over those coffee beans by grinding them. So good with keeping the caffeine. <laughs> Just yeah, I think grind it's a fancy, fancy substances only. Yep. Only, only substances that rich people would have. Cigars, have maybe like, maybe, maybe fancy champagne or something. I don't well, know. Because rich people definitely have cocaine. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Well, we're not going to do cocaine this week. I, Sorry, I think I think what <laughs> I, I think he's just illogical. I think that's what it really just comes down to. He, there, there's no sense, rhyme or reason to it. He's just like, if I do it, it's okay. <laughs> yeah, it's like supposed to. Yeah, I think what what you're saying here is that it's like a. It's supposed to be like the the it's a, a dick. fancy a fancy and masculine. It's his dick. <laughs> It's his dick. Some, I know Freud said sometimes a cigar is just a cigar, but we all know Freud's lying. Yeah. So here we go. We've got 
Weekends are for the week. K cups are for the week. Drinking, fooling around with a bunch of bad things, bad people, making poor choices. At 25 years old, I cleaned it all up. Quit going to those places, quit using those things, quit hanging out with people that did not have ethics and discipline in their life, that weren't committed to the same things that I was. I wanted to build something in my life. I wanted to become someone. And to do that, to become someone yeah. in the eyes of the world, the first this thing I had to This is not even a morning routine video. This I is just him on. bragging about himself. So put some things together. Three or four things you can do every day to start the day, kickstart your day, get going in your day, <laughs> to give you a sense <laughs> of your respect day. for this yourself. This is so grand. For My advice is Look, do it yourself. Just that sun up every morning gives me the sense of accomplishment. Beat the sun up. That I did what I said, said I was going to do. That I woke up when I said I would wake up. And I start building respect for myself, start believing in myself so that I can go out into the world. And maybe, maybe, maybe today, maybe today when I go into this meeting that I'm dressed for, maybe they'll believe in me as much as I believe in me. And that'll show up in a contract, a deal, maybe even some money. A deal Pizza. for what? What are you even selling? What do you sell? <laughs> Oops, I didn't mean to. Oh, undercover. I wanted to do the, a review 000. of the undercover billionaire, but I didn't mean to click on it then. You guys are just getting started. See, like, so here's the thing. I liked this. He definitely sells motivation with his attention. With his videos, he's constantly selling motivation. Yes. What's laughable is your. he basically says your morning routine should be three to four things that you choose yourself. And he thinks that's empowering. And here's the thing. Since we're already motivated to do it for the sake of creating content, it's better for us. But for someone who's not motivated to start a morning routine, they're going to be like, what the fuck should my first three or four things in the morning be? Right. What I appreciated about Rachel was she actually gave you notes to play on your instrument before you could improvise on your own. Right. She was like, this is exactly what I do down to the minute. And I guess if we follow the, the, the one from the How to Turn Bad Days into Good Days video, then we do get down to the minute goofy time that's too There's down to the minute <laughs> like we gotta get a telescope <laughs> oh my god here listen what cat says here last year on this day i was in las vegas for someone's wedding and grant's 10x convention was in the same hotel we were staying at it was so crowded oh my god you had more fun i guarantee it <laughs> I would love to go, like, I think it would be so fun to go to some of these conventions to review them because I, I want to see, I, I can't imagine that they're not, like, super cult-like. Oh, it has to, I mean, like, when Rachel was talking about her conventions, or when people were talking about going to Rachel's conventions, like, they're talking about w the, the physical exercise that they do mm -hmm. in order to release the endorphins and get everyone more receptive to ideas, yep. which, again, is one of those things that's at its base true, and then they find a way to completely pervert it. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Okay, so we watched these. He's got my daily... Oh, that one is long. That's a long-ass video. We're not going to watch that. Yeah, that's why on YouTube I 2x. I don't 10x. Oh, I 2x my videos. here's another guy here who said, I tried Grant Cardone's morning routine. Here's what happened. This guy's doing just like we are. Good for him. Shout yeah, but out he to made a video. Money. <laughs> he made a, a short video. I'll still watch it. I'm going to add that to my watch later playlist. There we go. Let's look at Grant's video about impossible goals. And this is a video of him just walking on the beach. Look how much money I have. Well today. Uh-oh. I got water coming in on me. Wow. The surf is coming to get us here in Miami. It's a beautiful day. Gorgeous. Guys, I'm not perfect. Hey, I can't I stop the ocean. You are. <laughs> it's beautiful. Hope you're I'm doing so well quirky. Today. The water and, comes for uh, me sometimes. Spending some time with your family, getting your goals <laughs> just together. Just like you. Look at what you can do. I'm just like you. Sometimes when I'm at the beach, the water. Get wet. I get wet in the water at the beach. <laughs> that was so forced. He yawned. He hit me. He was like, guys, the wave's coming. I've got to prove I'm a human. I don't melt in water. <laughs> I love how his kids are in the background, like, and he's just ignoring them. <laughs> Daddy, pay attention to me. Hey, Shut Dad, up, cat. Attention. I'm not the cat. <laughs> to make your life better. She's calling for him. I'll tell you one thing that's really helped me. Yeah, his kid is like, <laughs> she his daughter. She was like, is that a turtle? <laughs> and Shut and up. He, he just stared at her and then was like, anyway, so back to my vlog. <laughs> Turtles 10x their life. They live longer than us. Be a turtle. <laughs> My life. 
getting up early, two things. They cost nothing. Two things. Number one, getting up early. Keep the sun up. And number two, write my goals down first thing of the day. I'll attach a, uh, I created a planner that I could use for myself. I'll attach it below. I'll have somebody do that for Wait, you. How much does the planner cost? Here we go. Oh, it's definitely free and it's definitely like. A lead magnet? At, at best, um, an Excel spreadsheet. At best. No, it's $20. You're fucking, he's selling a $20 planner. Yeah, hold up. I'm gonna I'm gonna bring it up here. <laughs> I hate these people. Yeah, they're the worst. There we go. The 10x daily planner. It's on sale for $20. It's originally $35. Buy the 10x planner four pack. Want to dominate your time like Grant Cardone? <laughs> Because everyone knows that when you buy a planner, you always fill it all the way to the end and then move on to the next planner. I mean, you never just have like a blank planner laying around like, man, why did I spend that money? That's true. Yep. I, I love I love this. Stop procrastination forever. Squeeze minutes out of every day. Everything is so active. Like he's good at it. Okay, not him. I'm sure he has a copywriter to do this. Oh, I'm sure he's good at sales pitching. I mean, how else did he grow? That's true. But whoever writes his website is very good at like active verbs. Like, it's like squeeze minutes out of every day. Dominate your time. I mean, yeah, we we know firsthand that he's not a writer. Like, he's not Rachel. When we ten X and be obsessed or be average are are not books. They're they're rants. <laughs> yeah, his his books are not well written because he's very clearly just rambling into the dictation software the entire time. Make um basically extend oh the bag sorry make one of those videos that we just listened to like eight hours long and that's a uh that's his book I, I can't yeah. oh there it is no problem <laughs> I love that right here he says this ain't your daddy's planner I know <laughs> my dad would never waste money on that <laughs> the ten x planner is for the entrepreneur that demands ten to ten x their life. You will learn how to schedule your day, write down your goals, motivate yourself, set your target, note your accomplishments, keep your goals in mind. I hate him. Like, he's such a... He, he climbed out of South Park and found a body. Uh, it even says in it, this ain't your daddy's planner right here. <laughs> I bet you he came up with that and fucking loved it. And he's like, guys, we're putting this on everything. Yeah, let's look at this plan. I mean, it looks like a pretty standard planner. But it has write, 10x on it. You write your it has 10x on every page. He's got like a 10x watermark on every page. Yeah, you write your your goals, targets, successes. Savvy, I'm gonna make 10.5x. Yeah. I'm a they, half I'm I'm half an X better than him. The thing about 10x is like, when does it stop? Why don't you 100 x Because shouldn't you, if you 10x something, shouldn't you 10x it again? Or do you stop after one round? Yeah. Or maybe uh, you stop after 10 rounds. So that would be, what, 10 to the 10th power? I don't know what that is. It, it would be a boxing match. <laughs> what is this video? How to use your 10X planner. The planner, the 10X planner. And I want to show you how I use my 10X planner and why each of the pages are laid out the way they are. Okay. Why do I have dates on the left side? Why do I have my goals twice? Why do I have them on to the To be right honest, side? like I don't have I don't have that much of a problem with the 10X planner. Like it's it seems a little like it's a regular planner, but you know, I know plenty of people who sell planners and have their own planner system. Like I, this right here I'm using, this is the clever Fox planner. I, I wrote down my goals and my to-do list and it all in there this morning. So I don't have a problem with, uh, with someone making a planner based on the system that works for them and selling it. I just think it's a little obnoxious that every page is like 10 X, 10 X, 10 X. And I wouldn't buy Grant Cardone's planner. I would much rather buy a planner from like someone who starts a full planner company. Grant Cardone has enough money already. Um, so he attached the planner below. Um, cool. So we're going to continue. Oh, dude, Grant Cardone has 
one and a half million YouTube subscribers. I'm jealous. I want to get to more YouTube subscribers than Grant Cardone. That means I have to, what do I have to do? Do I have to, if I 10 X my channel right now, I'd be at 120,000. So I have to hundred X. If I hundred X my channel, I would be at Grant Cardone's level. So guys help me hundred X my YouTube channel so that I can have more subscribers than Grant Cardone. If you want to grab it and, but you don't have to, you can write it down on a blank piece of paper. I've been doing this for 30 years now. Writing down impossible goals to achieve. Ooh, we didn't write down impossible goals. Maybe tomorrow I'll have to write down impossible goals. Is that like, oh my God, what would cause me to get up today early? Yeah, I like that Firebrat says car salesman vibe. I'm pretty sure Grant Cardone started off as a car salesman. Like, he started as a car salesman and then moved into real estate sales and then moved into business coaching. Yeah. I mean, I see, the, again, I see the appeal of writing down impossible goals. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I stand by this. Everything about him is find baseline good advice and ruin it. That's his entire brand. <laughs> Take it way too far. Take the advice of like, you should set your goals too high so that if you fall short of them, you fell short of something even higher because you were reaching for something higher. I agree with that. And then when we when we review the 10X rule on Friday, I want to talk about that and how I originally agreed with the premise of the book. But then he takes that to a level where he's like, that means I have to be the fastest person on the road because I want to be winning in every moment of the day. That means that everything in life is your fault and you cause everything. Like he is just, is too far, dude. So, so to Emily, it could be, but at the same time, like, here's the deal. Again, he, he, he takes it too far, but as, as, as like Savvy said, when, when you aim a little higher, it does give you sometimes not everyone that, that extra motivation. Like I know personally, if I set my goals, uh, what was it in? I, I hate that. I quote this book all of the time. You know what? I, I read it in another book too. So I'm going to quote a different book this time in, Oh no, it's another habit book. Never mind. Fuck it. In atomic habits, they talk about being in the zone and how, when they actually ran a, like a brain scan of the test, they can't quite quantify what the zone is, but it's, 4% higher than 100% focus or like, like it's, it's, it's one of the, it's like just out of the realm of being completely focused on something because it's one of those things where if you're not challenging yourself, you get bored and you sort of just meander. And if you challenge yourself too far, you do get demotivated because it's, it's too overwhelming. So there is a sweet spot that's like just out of the realm of your reach or the grasp of your reach. And it does add that extra motivation to you. Um, which we then have dubbed in the zone. I think that there's also, you know, it depends on what personally motivates you. Cause for me, like I always set my goal, like I set my goals a little higher than, than what I think is reasonable. And if I can achieve higher than what I originally thought was reasonable, that's like, whoa, I could do more than I even expected. But like, so for example, in 2020, I set a goal to release four books. I ended up releasing three books. But if I had fallen short of a goal to like release one book, then I would have released nothing, you know? So instead I set it higher and fell short of it. And But I could still celebrate that falling short. I still <coughs> accomplished a lot. So I agree with that on the surface. But then again, like for some people, that's not helpful to them. For some people, the feeling of each accomplishment is what motivates them. So again, it's one of those things where there is no one size fits all approach to any of this, which is why a lot of the advice that people sell is useless. Yeah, and I fucking like... They're, they're totally, they are in a way, this is just a, I don't even know how to put it. This is an oversimplification of a problem. They are in a way filling a void of since we've moved away from trade practices and uh, historic apprenticeships, mentor apprentice relationships, there has been a bit of a void of what's the relationship outside of parental guidance to real world work. Because historically, that was filled by one person training you. You apprentice under them. They're your mentor. You learn everything from them. And then you eventually become a journeyman and a master. 
since we no longer have that, people are sort of looking for mentors. They stumble upon these fucking scammers who insist that their way is the best way. They give a one size fits all approach that doesn't fit for everyone. If you fail, they blame it on you so they can take no accountability for their actions. And we end up with this group of sort of like lost wandering journeymen who just want to find that mentor figure outside of their home and are giving all of their money to these gurus that don't actually help them. It's disgusting. Yeah, a lot of people in the comments are bringing up that it would probably be better to call them stretch goals rather than, and I agree with that. Yeah, so call it like talking about setting impossible goals. That might just be like, because now you have to think about what level is impossible, right? If you think about setting stretch goals, that's more like, what do I want to accomplish? Okay, now can I add a little more to it and make that my goal? And so, yeah, I think that might be more productive. So I'm all for the stretch goals. Ava's also, too fucking kind. Eva got RK's book, Father in the Forest, yesterday. All right. Ava, Magical you're too kind. I love you. Girl for Life says that RK hit the nail on the head. You absolutely did. Thank you. I sometimes try and hit screws on the head and it doesn't work. <laughs> what would cause me to want to make that extra phone call? What would it take? What would, I, what would need to propel me or inspire me so much that I'm like, I'm willing to do all this hard stuff that maybe I haven't been doing and could be possibly keeping me from getting the life I deserve. In this case, the life you deserve. I still do this today. Wake up in the morning, write my goals down. First thing I do is write my goals down. These are big goals, unachievable goals. Second thing I do is write down my quote of the day. What am I living by today? Not somebody else's quote. Well, it could be. It's really my quote. Not somebody else's quote. quote. What am it I could watching? be someone else's quote, but it's what really can I my plagiarize? quote. It's like it could <laughs> be plagiarized, but who cares? She's going to have to write her own goals down. She's going to have to come up with her own quotes. My kids have She's to write down their own goals. Herself. I want daddy to notice me for once. <laughs> That's the kids' goals. <laughs> like, like, I want dad to spend more time with me today. My goal is for dad to notice me, so maybe I will set the kitchen on fire. <laughs> oh, shit. I stole the cat today. He still calls me cat. <laughs> That's the thing in the 10x rules. He talks about like how kids are so great at demanding things. He's like, like when a baby is hungry, they just start crying and they don't care that they are annoying everyone. They just scream because they're hungry. And that's what we need to do. We just need to be unafraid to just scream when we're hungry. And if no one cares, then we need to 10x it. And we gotta shit ourselves. <laughs> Take that juice cleanse like Rachel and shit yourself. <laughs> Oh my god. We get to decide and do whatever we want to do or as little as we want to do. The problem with the little part is if you're capable of doing more than you're doing and you're not, you're probably not going to feel good about yourself. I know I did. Hated myself. Hated myself. <sighs> and I knew I could achieve more and I wasn't. I think this is why people watch sports. Tell it's us why. Great pass, great catch, great block, great tackle, great breakout tackle, great dunk. Whatever the shot is, right? It's like, wow, man, that person did something that that, that is full potential, and we're shocked by it. But in reality, in reality, it's probably because we know we all have that in it. I bet you got more in you than you're using right now. Got more in us than we're using so right this, now. Try this simple. Wake up early. Just try it for a couple, three days, three or four, five days. Oh, so we're going to do it for five five. days, Grant. One day. That's all you got to do. Five days. And then two. Right to go. Try here. it for 10 days. You got 10x. So does he watch sports? Because he had a nothing of like the emotional attachment and tribal mentality of what sports yeah, actually yeah. bring. <laughs> yeah. When I watch sports, it's like if I can see a really great something really great move of any kind it's like okay that's cool but for me yeah it's about it's about like you know craving that that cult cult elements but without it being dangerous you know what i mean like craving that it's like, tribal it's yeah, absolutely yeah. tribal you you have like a connection <laughs> to the people around you where you all like idolize the same thing even if it's uh nonsensical so it's it's kind of like you know Sports is the outlet so that you don't join a cult. 
Yeah. Is- <laughs> why, 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 why do I watch the Bills? Because I don't know, on Sundays, I want Buffalo to be better than Cincinnati. Like <laughs> Exactly. Yeah. That's like I watch college sports because it's like, for me, like in college, being a part of like a Big Ten school and a Big Ten marching band and all of that was like, it gave me that uh, like such a community, you know? And so when I, when I watch college sports, it's like, you know, you're watching these school communities face off against each other and just cheer each other. Oh yeah. It's really just like a, it's tribalism. Like you said, it has not, not really, at least in my opinion, maybe for him, actually it it makes sense. Grant probably is not a fan of any team. He probably just watches sports to like, be like, Ooh, you should have 10 X that pass. Should have thrown that ball 10 times harder, man. Maybe he watches like that's why he, Maybe he just watches boxing. Yeah, that would make In sense. UFC, because that, like, that doesn't have the same tribalism, because like you, you can cheer on individual fighters. Um, I, I, there's some, like uh, Dustin Poirier. I can never remember. Po- Poirier, he's, he's from uh, Lafayette, Louisiana, so a lot of people around here support him, but mm-hmm. it's not like people in New Orleans cheering for the Saints. Right, right, right. You want to be a millionaire, billionaire, trillionaire? Good, right? Touch, you want to be a trillionaire. You want to be a trillionaire? Right. Write it down. Five or six goals that you want to achieve, or maybe more. And then tomorrow, you want to have more money than Microsoft? <laughs> I, why are all his goals money related, too? He's like, my goals are I want to be a billionaire, then I want to be a trillionaire. <laughs> then I want to own the Galactic Fetter. It's because he's addicted to money. It, you replace cocaine with he snorts. He snorts money. He snorts money. Yeah. I mean, that makes sense. Honestly, a lot of times you hear that people who have addictive personalities, which I do, I definitely have an addictive personality. So I am addicted to like working all the time and also caffeine. Uh, So yeah, that's, that's a thing. Um, So I guess that makes sense. You, but you want to make sure the things you're addicted to can be like, because for me, like my addiction to working is what's like made me able to work on things I'm passionate about. So it's been healthy for me. But like, if you make your addiction to money, I feel like that's not going to be healthy in the long run. But I'm not a psychiatrist, so don't take my word for it. But also Grant doesn't believe in psychiatrists. So yeah, you want (laughs) if you want to get your brain right, you got to wash it with Grant Cardone. Wash girl, wash your brain. brain. Girl, Um, wash your brain. (laughs) Wait, before we press play, are people talking? I've never played a D&D campaign. I've always wanted to. Every time I've done it, it's fallen through. If there is an online D and D campaign being set up right now, I would love to be involved. <laughs> Christina says ingesting actual money worked for Magic Johnson on South Park. You're right. It's how he cured AIDS. <laughs> You're right. Maybe Grant's onto something here. <laughs> and then they they just went to I, I forgot what it was. Like I think they just treated Africa as like one giant country too, and it was just like travel to Africa. Guys, we found the cure for AIDS. You just have to inject like $20 million into your bloodstream. (laughs) Bye. Oh my God. Yeah, I remember that episode. (laughs) Do it again. See which ones pop up tomorrow. Now, this is what I do. A little trick. I do in the morning and I do before I go to sleep at night. First thing I do when I wake up. What's more important than your goals? First thing I do when I wake up, last thing I do before I go to sleep at night. Jerking off. And I'll throw one little trick in. That's how powerful it is. Anytime I'm disappointed, anytime I'm discouraged. Oh, dude, this is definitely, yep. <laughs> so far, he's about to be talk about jerking off. Yeah, he's, he's, he's When I'm alone, I just sit on my hand until it goes numb and I go this and I do the stranger. <laughs> this is when I wake up, before I go to sleep, whenever I'm disappointed, whenever I'm sad. <laughs> anytime I'm down, anytime I lose. Anytime I lose. I write my goals down again. Oh, okay. It's writing your goals. I know it's a metaphor. All right. I'm coming to Birmingham. Tonight I'm in Clearwater. Then I go to Birmingham Wednesday. Dubai on Thursday. Abu Dhabi on Sunday. Istanbul, Kosovo. Dude, London. he's going everywhere. And then it goes crazy. We do Vegas in December. January 4th, L- listen to the schedule. Sa- uh, Phoenix, 5th, San Diego, 6th, Orange County, 11th, LA, 12th, Sacramento, uh, 18th, back to Vegas. This is all in January. 
I'm a light January up so hard. I'm gonna mentor a million. People I'm gonna light January up so hard. <laughs> See, how can you say you're gonna mentor a million people? Like, I would be so curious what percentage. Or also, that. Emily brings up a great point. Did he leave his kids alone on the beach down there? He just kind of left the beach. <laughs> <laughs> My kids' goals for the day was find their way home. <laughs> Even that, like my kids, they have to set their own goals. They got you. I'm not helping them with their goals. My kids have their own goals. I'm gonna buy kids. I'm leaving you on the beach. They're like, Dad, is this a turtle? And he's like, uh, Anyway, 10x. She's going off with the turtle. The turtle's the babysitter. It's free. Oh my god. I watch Finding Nemo. I know that they're cool with their kids. So y'all, that is that is Ooh. how Grant Cardone spends his morning. Um, you got to beat the sun up. You got to write yeah, your goals your down. You got to beat <laughs> someone. Yeah. Questionable hag energy says, beat your meat. Not the sun. Wait, and then M mushroom destroyer said, yeah, it's, she, I think she was said it much earlier. She was like, beat the sun, then beat your meat. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And this is true. Well, questionable hag energy says he's the type of dude who babysits his kids. Like, oh yeah. When parents say like, Oh, I'm babysitting tonight. It's like, um, no, I'm you're pretty parenting. Sure, pretty sure those are your own kids. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I would bet that he probably hires someone to raise his kids, which again, it's okay to have a nanny in your life, but I don't, yeah, I don't really feel like he, I don't know. When I read Be Obsessed or Be Average in the book, he was talking about how like one of his goals that he definitely accomplished was to be an attentive father who's very involved in his kid's life, but he's not really done a good job showing that yet. So I don't know. Maybe he just started so low that 10xing it really doesn't do much. Like if he remembers his kid's name one day a week. Yeah, like he spends, he spends eight minutes with his kids. He used to spend less than one minute a day with his kids. So he 10xed that. He 10xed it. <laughs> He's like, oh, now I added in the time where I, I spend time with my kids at 637. I realized that I had a couple extra minutes in there. Yeah, I, I agree with Katie. It's all fun and games until coastal erosion. <laughs> <laughs> well yeah that's what um dark demon says i bet covid squashed a lot of his plans yeah he has not his business has not been doing well and this is the thing a lot of like pretty much all the gurus have been suffering during covid because all of their like their whole thing is about like you're in control of your whole life and then this like completely unpredictable thing takes over the entire world and then they're like they're just completely like grasping at straws now so a lot of Grant Cardone's videos and TikToks and things have been very weird. I don't think his business is doing well right now. Which is like, uh, funny. It's sad. it's sad that they just completely ignore the fact that black swans happen like mm -hmm. every decade. Like the, 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 I mean, the previous decade we had multiple. 9-11 was a black swan. The tech bubble was a black swan. Uh, the Great Recession was a black swan. Uh, obviously COVID is like these happen regularly. <laughs> what did we have in the 2010 to 2019 decade? I'm like blanking on that decade. I'm blanking. Though... Did that decade exist? Did it exist? I mean, I'm pretty sure it existed. <laughs> I don't know. We, we had Obama. <laughs> yeah. Um, it, it, it was, that was, that was college decade. So who knows what we had? Yeah, okay. Well, Grant Cardone, I think, has not been, he's not been super good about how he's reacted to COVID. Like, I did actually, when, when, like, before the, like, right when the lockdowns were first starting, like, almost a year ago now, I did a video on this channel where I reacted to one of his videos where he was talking about, it's the one where he says, get you some nuts. That's where I got that from. <laughs> it's like, oh, dude, we should be eating nuts right now. Oh, man, I need to, I, tomorrow I'm going to get me some nuts. Um, but yeah, so in that video, he was talking about how if you're struggling in the pandemic, what you need to do is invest all your money in Cardone Capital because it's going to grow there. Like that was what his video was about. And then he also was doing all these videos about how we need to open everything back up immediately because it's hurting the economy. And it's like, yeah, but people are dying, dude. Oh, I actually with Veronica. Trump was absolutely a black swan because he he he, he was. Uh, I completely agree with that. You're right. Yeah, that's true. That's a good point. Yeah, I guess I was thinking more in terms of like major disaster events, but I mean, I guess that is a disaster event. But like, 
you know, in terms of like a pandemic, I guess is more like a natural disaster or something. But that's you no, know, you, I think that's a good point. I, yeah. yeah, and to the uh, who who asked it? It was um, Emily. Uh, yeah, black a black swan. It, like that's just a way of saying uh, an unpredictable event that can cause like something that literally no one could see coming. Like if an asteroid hit Earth, that would be a black swan event uh, that can cause severe consequences, whether it be like health, natural disaster, or like economic. Didn't it, see with that the, coming. Yeah. Oh, I'm yeah. so sorry, Mushroom. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry about uh, your friend's dad. Eva says, I don't know what he did to become a voice to listen to, but it seems common that their success came before their content. It's all, everything's about success. Just this vague idea of success. And I think the more vague it is, the more they can capitalize on it. Sort of like with volatile markets, the more volatile they are, the more um, money there is to be made. The more volatile the definition of success is, the more people there are to scam. Questionable Hag Energy says, <clears throat> my father-in-law sells supplements to a lot of natural health people who are obsessed with Cardone. They were still traveling and doing meetups. Oof, that's not good. Privilege is interchangeable with success. Yeah, for a lot of these people. And, and and they will also go so far to tell you how not privileged they are, which like to an extent, everyone has different privileges. Everyone has advantages and disadvantages in their life. But like Grant Cardone will go so far to be like, I was not privileged at all. Like I, my family was so poor. And it's like, I like that's impressive that you broke the poverty cycle. But to say you have had no privileges at all is just not true. Like you're a straight white man. You didn't like, uh, you know, 40 years ago, there were a lot more barriers to people who were not in those categories and you did not have to deal with that. So like, it was just, there's, there's, that's part of it too, is that when people are successful, they want to chalk it all up to themselves. But I will say at least Grant believes that not only are do you have to own all your successes, you have to own everything bad that happens to you, which I think is stupid all around. Like you shouldn't be the one who's solely responsible for your success, nor should you be the one who's so, like solely responsible for your <clears throat> problems. But he's the one that's like, if you've made a lot of money, that is a hundred percent just you. No one else ever helped. But also if someone rear-ended you this morning, that's also your fault because you should have been rich enough to have the clients come to your house instead of ever having to drive. Yeah, that's just him. <laughs> hitting his highest highs and lowest lows yeah exactly i think in leah remini's scientology the aftermath she's a scientology views kids as adults if i'm remembering that's oh so that might be up. why he doesn't like he just kind of leaves his kids on the beach because in scientology he would see them as an adult that's interesting we're gonna have to do so i think on tomorrow interesting is another way of saying fucked up that's interesting. I mean, the point you bring up is interesting. If that's true, that's incredibly messed up. Yes. Um, yeah, I think on tomorrow's stream, we got to start doing some Scientology research. Start, like, reading Dianetics or something. So, like, and I, I agree. I'm just, I'm just thinking out loud right now. I was never, like, actively cheering against Rachel that much. I think she's done a much better job of humanizing herself, and I think maybe she wanted to. Um, yeah. I know she's done a lot of fucked up things. I don't, mm -hmm. I still don't feel like I I know the real Rachel because mm -hmm. so much about her feels perfectly manicured. Oh, definitely. E even as you talk about the, uh, the curated imperfections. Yeah. Grant has not done a good job of humanizing himself. Again, I think that's purposely done. Um, yeah. So I don't feel myself having, if, if, if he tripped on the sidewalk, I wouldn't be like, Oh, are you okay? <laughs> I think I just keep walking. <laughs> yeah, Grant, I think, intentionally wants to appear superhuman. Yeah. 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 I, I like, yeah. but he's just, he's just so vague. He's so vague. And I think, I, I think part of that's just his funnel as well, where it's like, it's, the less he says, the more he can upsell because he can promise more secrets at the next lesson. Yeah. But he, I, if like if he got into finance, he'd be, he'd be a wolf of Wall Street too. He'd, he he oh, he would have gone to prison for selling like for for uh for ruining people's lives for for selling pink slips and and overselling and and selling under false pretenses and uh stock manipulation. I mean, basically, a lot of what he talks about is just manipulating markets. Now he's not talking about financial markets, but he's talking about uh harassing a client into giving you their money. 
in 10 and in, in 10x he talks about that he talks about how he was he he refused to apologize for his employee for harassing a potential client. And then they ended up signing the client instead, which for one, I'm calling bullshit on. Yeah. Uh, and, and two, like, that's, that's not good business practice. Like if, if it happened to you once, you're lucky. That's not good. That's an exception. It's not a rule. Dude, I think we should not do the whole thing in one thing, but maybe we can watch... <laughs> Chewie, shut up. Chewie, keep protecting her. <laughs> Chewie's like, I hate Grant Cardone too. I think we could watch uh, and react to a little bit of the Grant Cardone and Jordan Belfort, the Wolf's Den podcast interview because it's pretty wild. So are they, okay, first off, you said that they have a bit of like a, a rivalry going I on? I think so. I don't like, I, from what I've seen on YouTube, um, let me look it up. Let's look up. That's all the videos I saw were them having being at odds with each other, which is always fun when two people who are both equally terrible hate each other. Cause sometimes people are like, you know, the enemy of my enemy is my friend or whatever. But in this case, it's like, no, this is just a fire. I'm going to watch from a distance. Yeah. It, it, it could be like WWE. They're just fabricating beef to sell more and get more attention. All right. Let's which see. I wouldn't put past them. And um, what was it in 48 rules of power or whatever it was, it talks about the, like, which is a book I guarantee they've read. Um, it talks about the importance of identifying an enemy, because if you can identify an enemy, uh, one can't sneak up on you. Mm -hmm. And that definitely feels like something that they would do. So this is the podcast interview that I think we need to watch the parts of, because this is the one where Grant Cardone goes off on how no interest is a level of interest. And all of that. But this one here, we've got Grant Cardone calls Wolf of Wall Street, Jordan Belfort, a broke rat, part four. <laughs> which, I mean, you can agree Jordan with. Jordan Belfort say exposes old. Grant Cardone. Which, again, you can agree with and still say he's a piece of shit. Also, I was thinking this yesterday because I was watching it. Now, I'm not saying Jordan Belfort. I, I'm trying to, like, I look at him and I don't see an ugly man. And I'm thinking to myself, like, if he was a truly ugly man, like, if he was not in good shape, if he, if he looked hideous, I feel like he would not be idolized the way that he is right now. Because he he is a criminal who ruined people's lives. That's the thing. A lot of people don't talk about, like, attractiveness privilege. But if you are even, you don't even have to be, like, super hot if you're even just, like, not mild, ugly. Just not ugly. Yeah. If yeah, if even if you have like a little bit of conventional attractiveness to you, people will forgive you a whole lot easier. Yeah, like Ted Bundy had groupies. That's so weird, dude. <laughs> yeah, then we've got Wolf of Wall Street destroys Grant Cardone. Grant Cardone versus Jordan Belfort alpha battle analysis. <laughs> There's a whole lot of fun stuff here. Grant Cardone is all don't call me beta unless it's a fish. <laughs> <laughs> 300 mil, negative 100 mil. <laughs> yeah, so I guess people have to choose. Are you Team Grant or Team Jordan? Man, this is like Twilight of con artists. I get, this, is, this has to be fabricated. It there's, has to be. There's so much shit on here. I, this was absolutely fabricated for views. Yeah, I think you're probably right because it's like, if you want, like, there's no way to not hate them both. Yeah. I, and I mean, like, I also, I, I'm not even mad at the strategy. I see the, I, I see, like, it's YouTube. It's entertainment. I, I yeah. see its purpose. Let's take a look at this. I think people need to learn how to talk to people. Right. Keep talking to them, no matter what their interest is. Sales training, time management, personal efficiency, closing, negotiating, personal finance, and money mastery. These are all things that I have done successfully in my life that I'm like, hey, this worked for me. I don't know if it's going to work for you, but I know it's going to work. I know it worked for me. I hate him so much. I hate him so much. God, I hate him so much. I hate them both so much. I hate them. I fucking hate them. Eva is right. Author tube should have battles like this. We need to have more battles. Author tube's problem is it has its battles behind like anonymous forums, so that no one yeah. can actually capitalize on the attention. Right, and it's like, yeah, it, it would be so much better if we could run like. But then, then we're introducing all the drama into the community, and that would be a problem. But oh, oh thank you, Firebrat. Yeah, she's fantastic. I, I actually met her on LinkedIn, which again I keep saying, Grant's. The principles of Grant's advice are not his, so I don't feel bad for saying this. 
but they're correct. Like if you are actively trying to put yourself out there and meet new people every day, you're going to meet some interesting people who you can work together with. I have this rule where I max out my connections on LinkedIn daily, and I just send a very basic, thanks for connecting, how are you message. Now I'm not Grant Cardone, and I'm not actively trying to sell every single person I meet on there. What I am trying to do is engage in a conversation, I bit my lip, is engage in a conversation and, and that was not curated in perfection. That hurt. Um, <laughs> Are you okay? <laughs> yeah. What, what I'm not trying to do is sell to every single person on there. I'm trying to uh, hear their story. Mm -hmm. Because for one, here, here's the best piece of sales advice I don't hear anyone talking about. When you're trying to make a sale, shut the fuck up. They are infinitely more important than you if you're making a sale. Their story is the only thing that matters. If you are talking more than them, you are doing something wrong. So I just engage with them. I ask them questions. I hear about their life. And if I can work with them on a business side, I'll ask if they want to get a coffee. I never try and make a sale online. And I never even really try and make a sale in the first meeting. I always set a, I always set a time and place that's completely neutral. That's not at my office because I want it to be a completely neutral feeling where I can just get to know them. And if I feel like I could possibly close them on a sale, I then inst I then incite or instigate a second meeting, which is in the office, because I consider the office home field advantage. And the, like the percentages, I'm always dealing with percentages. What are, your, what are your closing percentages? If you're online, your closing percentages are probably less than a tenth of a percent, and you're just going a pure quantity model. You don't want to fucking do that. If you can meet with them in person over coffee, your numbers go up a little bit. If you can get them in your office for a second meeting, personally, I've seen my percentages go anywhere from 30 to 50 percent so Cher oh, thank you so much Cher. So smart. <laughs> i think so too i think that works for you really well because you have like a service-based business when i have a product-based business it's a little harder because it's like i guess if i were if we were in a place right now where i i would be doing this if if that was my original plan for trying to sell to stores, right? Like trying to make deals with local toy stores and bookstores and things like that was to try to set up those meetings with purchasing managers and that kind of thing. Right now I am just trying to sell direct to customer online. So it's a little bit harder because I'm not going to go meet with someone and, and just for them to buy a product, you know? So it's a, it's a little, but I think in terms of like a service-based company where you're trying to get clients and that kind of thing, I think that's brilliant. Yeah. And it were, and so the woman I did the mental health interview with on, on LinkedIn, I didn't try and sell her anything. I connected with her thinking that maybe there's a chance I could sell her on something. I couldn't, but she had a really interesting story. So I invited her on my podcast. And the other thing is, y'all, if you're trying to sell something, start a podcast, not because you want to sell on the podcast, but because if you can sell someone the opportunity to market themselves on a platform without costing any money, like a podcast, they are almost always going to accept it. My podcast was how I became friends with um, Jennifer uh, Weissop. I, I'm going to fuck up her last name, Weissop. She she owns the fastest growing. This is me doing a name drop. I know it sounds awkward, but so I, I don't try and sell her on anything. We're just friends. That, that's all that happened. It's not a business relationship. But I became friends with her, even though she has the fastest growing Southern food chain, Ruby Slipper, because I had a podcast and I gave her the opportunity to sell her business on my podcast. If I didn't have that, as I tried to reach out to her before I had a podcast, didn't get an answer. Had a podcast, asked, she asked if she wanted to come on the show, got an answer that day. So if you're trying to sell something, maybe start a podcast, see if it's for you, because you can give someone who might seem out of your reach as a client the opportunity to promote themselves on a platform they wouldn't have access to, and that will open the door to a conversation. What do I sell? Uh, two things. Uh, Follow the Hummingbird has sort of taken a hiatus because it transformed into something I barely recognize anymore. But initially, when I finished my master's degree in economics, I wanted to work with small businesses that needed help with business planning and bookkeeping. So I was doing that. Now I just do stock and it's, now I just analyze stocks for people that have a lot more money than me and tell them where to invest it. And you also run my social media. I run Savvy Social Media too. Uh, for Forever Home Friends. So RK is a Forever Home Friends social media manager. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's one more piece of advice, too. If you have ad money to spend, spend it on an influencer for two reasons. One, they have an audience that trusts them. I did this by selling ad space to Savvy. I, I paid Savvy to promote my podcast. So one, you get you gain access to an influencer who already has established trust with a specific audience. Two, you're paying an individual with I can, which I can say I feel so sleazy saying this in a jacket. <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm the everyday guy now. Um, <laughs> let, let me take off this shirt too. 
Yeah, two, hey, Lisa, we're turning into business gurus, dude. <laughs> two, the reason why you want to pay a specific person is it feels so much better for me to pay Savvy to promote my podcast than it does to pay Mark Zuckerberg because Mark Zuckerberg's an evil piece of shit who should probably play hopscotch on landmines. And I like Savvy. Yeah, exactly. There you go. Right. I'm, right now I've been trying to reach out to, and this is one thing I want to 10X this week, right? Because I think you we should both work on 10Xing our reach outs to people. Because uh, that's the thing that Grant Cardone is big at. Like if we're going to take actually the best parts of what he's good at, he's good at doing a lot of reach outs to people, getting in contact with a lot of people and that kind of thing. So I want to try this week to like reach out to 10 people a day with, like for something related to forever home friends. So for one, um, one thing, like you were saying, you know, you buying, like you sponsoring my videos inspired me to try to sponsor other people's videos. So I, um, I'm trying to, I want to start reaching out to maybe 10 influencers a day, um, on YouTube, um, probably not Instagram, just because I don't like Instagram that much. So I'm going to do it on YouTube because I'd rather sponsor people's videos. So, um, yeah, so I, I would probably, I'm going to start doing that more of that this week because I want to increase my advertising. And again, it's the thing you were saying, like, so for me, it's like, I sell things online direct to customers. So I need to, I want to start trying to find my rule is that the person has to have at least twice as many YouTube subscribers as I do. So I, I'm looking at like 25,000 as the minimum. So if anyone knows someone who has 25,000 YouTube subscribers or more and likes dogs, hit me up um, because I want to advertise on their channel. So, so I'm going to try reaching out to 10 a day. That's what I'm going to try to do now. And you should. What I will say for you, though, is don't rule out Instagram for one reason. Uh, since you're selling a product, a story might be better because then they can include the support small business button and they can just click right to your store as opposed to with a YouTube video. If you want to sell a product, you want to reduce the amount of distance between the person looking you're at right. what people and the want product. to click on the thing right away. Yeah. Um, someone will say yes. Captain Potato saying I used to enjoy doing face to face sales. Me too, dude. I cannot tell you how much I miss face-to-face -face sales. It was one of those things that I just had, I had gotten really good at. And now that there, there's no more of that, like online sales is much harder for me. But I think I'm going to try sponsor. If you guys have something, you a platform you want me to sponsor, just has to have at least twice as much as me. I will do it. Because otherwise it's like, I just put it on my own otherwise, you know? Yes, I was the secret business guru the whole time. And y'all can. <laughs> the, I, I suck as a business guru, though, because I don't have a course for you to sell or to, for you to buy. Um, but what I do have are these calling cards. So I just need 10 people in here to buy these calling cards. And y'all can, <laughs> can then find 10 more people and uh, we'll all get rich. <laughs> Actually, funny story. When I first met RK, I thought he was a business guru type. I was like, oh, this guy's a business guru because he had so many Twitter followers and I was jealous. And um, then I, I I got to know you and you talked about business so much. And I'm like, he might be a business guru. But then um, we became friends because you're the kind of dude that just like, we just say yes to everything each other has an idea for. And I think that that's a, a basis of a good collaborative friendship because we'll be like, you want to just live like business gurus for entire weeks for indefinitely? Like, yeah, let's do it. We were like, I think when we first met, like in 2018, we were talking for like a couple, we'd just been messaging for a couple days and suddenly you were like, we should write a novel together. And I was like, yeah. And now we're writing a novel together. So it's just like, we just like, let's do this. Okay, cool. Let's do it. So I, it's good to have someone who's like that in your life. Yeah, we're business gurus like Jim Carrey is and Yes Man. <laughs> yes. Yeah, honestly, Haley's right. This morning routine live stream is going to morph into a small business podcast so easily. It is. We're already, we've already been posting replays on Spotify if people want to listen to that. Yeah, your morning. And maybe we should do some interviews. We should do some interviews. Yeah, and I think it's like after we get through a couple weeks worth of living like various gurus and we start to develop our own morning routine. I think we should start doing interviews. I think we should get Grant Cardone on the podcast. Dude. So it's funny how in 
the uh, 48 laws of power, it like that whole identify your, your, your enemy thing is its whole chapter. It's its whole rule. And the whole idea behind it is you don't want to have an enemy sneak up on you. And by identifying an enemy, you do sort of tap into the tribalism of people who are going to pick one or the other, especially if that enemy is unpopular, you'll be seen as a hero. And I think Grant Cardone knows that. And I think he is, the, the other thing that's cool about identifying an enemy is if you identify an enemy who's higher than you and they notice you, they have now marked you as an equal. Exactly, yeah. So if you can make Grant Cardone your enemy, then yeah. he's marked you as his equal. Dude, that's why classically Abby never responds to me. I just realized. That's why she won't respond to me. That's why so Rachel the, Hollis doesn't, uh, has never, well, I guess Rachel Hollis has acknowledged Mooncat's video. She hasn't acknowledged any of my videos. She was on a podcast with, I think, Tom Bilyeu, and she was describing this video she saw and had to click away from because she found it offensive, and it was definitely, and people DM'd me, they're like, is this you? I'm like, no, it's Mooncat she's referring to. But that was interesting. She's Anakin Skywalker, though. I mean, like, I feel like yeah. she can bring balance to the force. I'm still cheering for her. Yeah, dude, that's the thing. Because <laughs> I, think, I think deep down she's got her heart in the right place. Like, she might kill Tony Robbins. Not not literally if this gets flagged. I just mean, like, the self-help guru industry. She could bring balance to the force one day. <laughs> Maybe we'll bring balance to the force. Maybe. I mean, if I were a Star Wars character, I think I would be old man in the desert number six so Ooh, i don't dude my used bookstore is doing half off all orders today and tomorrow oh yeah my used bookstore is my library <laughs> yeah i just did the superiority complex you know, yeah kidding. you um, did yeah you did <laughs> no i'm kidding i mean, I, I, I i love that you support bookstores I love because they, well, they're in our business and they need support i used to work at the used bookstore before covid and I lost my job there, but it's okay. I still want to support them. Yeah. No, I, I, I get that. Um, I was just fucking around y'all. Y'all, if you're going to buy books, buy books and support the bookstores. Yeah. My, my rule with buying books is buy books. However, you're going to support a small business the most. So if someone is a smaller author whose books are only available on Amazon, then you buy from Amazon. If the book is available at a local bookstore, buy it from the local bookstore. Um, so that's my rule is always like, especially if I want to buy like a big bestseller, I'll buy it from a local bookstore. But if it's, uh, if the book I want to read is like a more obscure book by a more unknown author, I will buy it on Amazon. So the author gets that, or if the author sells it on their own website, I'll buy it there. Uh, for people who want to buy forever home friends books, buy it on the forever home friends website. I'm hoping to take them off of Amazon soon. Oh yeah. If so, just Ava bought uh, Father in the Forest. If anyone here is curious about that book, one, I'm sorry, it's shitty. Two, I have 24 free Audible codes if y'all prefer audi audiobooks to that. I have 25 for the US and 25 for the UK. I'm more than happy to give those away. And if you want to support me still and you are like, I want the audiobook, but I still want to support you, I, I get paid when those free codes are used. So don't, don't stress. Yeah. I'm definitely like Reckless Mermaid saying go to local bookstores. I believe in local bookstores, but I also like it's it's a mix, right? I want to support local bookstores. However, a lot of smaller bookstores don't carry a lot of smaller, lesser known authors works and I want to support them too. So if a lesser known author's work is available exclusively on Amazon, I'll buy from Amazon then. So I don't like to rule out Amazon entirely because it cuts out a lot of authors that aren't big enough to be in the bookstores. So it's kind of a mix. You kind of just got to weigh it based on the project. Um, yeah, so Wolf's Den, y'all. JB this here in the so house, the Wolf's intense. Den. I got oh a God, great I guest him. I hate him so much. I hate I, him I, so I, much. I gotta put on a shirt. I don't want him to see me shirtless. Dude, we've got it. We should, we should live like him for a week. Okay, so we take Quaaludes and we ruin people's lives. Oh my God. Anyway, guys, also we got, I got this book Rise and Grind, right? I got this like years ago and I'm pretty sure it has a lot of people's morning routines in it. I haven't read it yet, but I think it does. So we might end up with a lot more morning routines. I, it might, I think it might have Gary Vee's morning routine in it. Oh, Captain Potato wants to know where the link is for the YouTube stream. Oh, the link for the YouTube stream. Yeah, I'll give it to you, sorry. Um, yeah, I, I stream simultaneously on YouTube and Twitch because I'm trying to 
build up a, a Twitch over time, but I don't have almost any Twitch followers. So let me send you a link to the YouTube stream Free case evaluation right now. Price. YouTube uh, stream is right here. Boop. There it is. <sighs> Fuck. You can follow us on, um, you can subscribe to my YouTube channel or my Twitch channel because this is always going to broadcast there. We also have, oh, let me pull up, I should pull up the link to our Spotify for where we repost all of these. On yeah, Spotify. I only have two up. I'll, I'll be sure to get up the rest of the Rachel Hollis ones this week. I got to finish downloading the rest of the episodes for that. If you can't, it's all good. I, I downloaded my illegal uh, YouTube download app again. So. And your morning guru on Spotify. Here it is. Whoop, there it. Oh, also the other thing that you could do if you want, I gave you the login information, right? Um, if you want to record the ad, that we have for Anchor, feel free to do that, and then we can start getting uh, ten bucks per one thousand views. That would be a dollar. Oh for yeah, ten, we ten cents per view. Yeah, we should absolutely do that. All right, so y'all, right here. Oh hey, Spence is on Twitch too. What's up? So y'all, right here is the link to our podcast on Spotify. It's called Your Morning Guru. Two business owners attempt to review every self-help guru's morning routine. This is such a great podcast premise. I don't know why no one's done this before. Or maybe they have and we just don't know. But either way, I feel like we're very cool for doing okay, this. Okay, Grant. This, this might be someone else's quote, but fuck <laughs> it. It's mine now. <laughs> like... <laughs> yeah, so we've got two episodes uploaded there. We're going to upload the rest of them as well. Yeah, if you watch 10x, then that would be a dollar. <laughs> uh, Ava, you you're you're ten dimes in one. You're a solid dollar. You're a silver dollar. I'm hoping to one day be a silver fox. You're a silver dollar. Oh, a link tree. Yeah, I use link tree on my Instagram. We should we could we could make a link tree to put in the description of all of these. That's a good idea. Um, my social media is just savvy right now. So just everyone sub to her, not me. <laughs> I, just, I just hang out with her all the time. If she ends up hating me, I'll no longer have an internet presence. I, I don't think that's going to happen. What do you think like, we have this like ongoing feud? Like it's the rumble in the freaking beach jungle here. But dude, I'm really actually excited. Oh, these two are both so really insufferable. They're this. so like, unlikable. Fuck off. My whole album is I want to try. You're to not Muhammad Ali. Don't reference that. I can't from you about how you go out and trade salespeople about yeah, your yeah. life because yeah. I want to give this massive to the audience. Right. Yeah, well, everybody wants to know. Everybody wants to know who's the better salesman, right? That's, that's what they keep saying. <laughs> I don't know. Arms look huge. Did you like? He's gonna say yes. Did he like work out right before this to try to? Yeah, I, I love to sell. I mean, but one thing it's I a good idea if he did. I'm even better at training salespeople than I am. At, I mean, I, I'm a great salesperson, yeah, but yeah. I really excel when I something about I love doing it. Like, yeah, I, I don't like sales at all. I love training people. Yeah, yeah. So, anyways, tell me, let's start in the beginning. Don't so, buy my course. Start selling. Uh, when I had to. So what was the, I what, what, being like, job? I hate was sales. That's such a like, lie, dude. Was a, it was a, what was my was it a clothing store? How I was paid six percent. On a twelve dollar tie, I was seven, 16 years old. Okay, so I'd make whatever that is six percent of twelve bucks. I mean, okay, I'd seven dollars and twenty. 70, no, seventy <laughs> seventy cents. Yeah, seventy two cents. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. These two are just awful and to listen to as well. You were you good at it? Though? Like no, neither of them should be on a podcast. Both terrible. of them are not fun to awful. listen to. The only time I was good at sales was when there was urgency on my part. Like I had. Yeah, Grant's more video based. I'd say. Like I sold furniture. I was terrible. I got fired. I was sold clothes I, I was fired from that job that's getting uh, fired everywhere and there was one other job i think it was a refinery job i, I lost that job. i lost six jobs but the the only time that i ever sold anything successfully was a bunch of fish that we had caught red fish <laughs> red snappers they caught hundreds and hundreds of them and i was you caught yourself i was on a supply boat out, okay. out in uh, New Orleans, Louisiana, off the coast. I was doing two weeks on. All right, Grants in New Orleans. Yeah, I, was, I like hanging out with RK that fishing. That was my job, right? It was a, it was a labor. It was a total labor boat. Three of us on the boat. We'd bring supplies out to the oil rigs. I've never told this story. And, and uh, we one day we drop lines over the boat in about a hundred. <laughs> I'm sorry, line. hearing him talk about lines. I know it's not, fishing not, lines. <laughs> right, a, a rope, dude, with like like eighty hooks on it. You just now wait. you see why I started a reaction channel. How much easier is this than making a video? 
Oh, dude, reaction. Yeah, doing reactions is Every way easier. Really? Like, Where was this now? This is uh, south of New Orleans. Okay. So we, we catch, I don't know, three, 400 fish. We couldn't even keep them all. Right. <laughs> Snapper about this big. So I tell the guys, the fish. Guys have your fish. I mean, we can't eat it all. So we put it on Queen ice. of Spades is Grant Cardone is the man I would in, never want to uh, date. Like Accurate. Later, well, because he stalks I women, stop, dude. He's a door. fucking stalker. This is how I got my, started my career. Door to door. I'm yeah, dude. Uh, yeah, Captain home. Potato. I have a Discord no, for Patreon right now. Ah, I'm okay, looking into making another one. Hey, hey, guys, I got some fish. It's fresh as shit right here. You know, I did the same job, by the way, but with boxes of frozen steak and meat. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I didn't have enough ice. I didn't plan or I didn't know I was This is so. This is so New York meets New Orleans. New York. I sold steak door to door in New Orleans. I sold fish. I sold snapper. I got fish. I got fish. That was my fucking I'll fish. give you really good that, prices. They're about this. I don't tell them now they're going to go bad. Uh, I got fish. I just Why it? does he have his face everywhere? We know what you look like. It's your podcast. Right? He's got, uh, this is just like the most obnoxious podcast setup I've ever seen. He's got his face everywhere. He's you got his he hat that says fish. cash flow. That's all I know about him. He loves himself and he has an old tennis racket. That's it. <laughs> he has to love himself because everyone else hates him. Right? Oh man, this is this is just wild. I uh, this is the most obnoxious office I've ever seen. Can you imagine walking into your office and just seeing your face looking at you? That would be a little weird. And I love looking at my face. Like I'm one of those very uh, conceited people. I'm, I think I'm very attractive, which I know is a weird thing to say, but I love looking at my face all the time. And because of that, like, but I would, I, even I would find this weird. Like this is a new level of weird to have his face everywhere in his office. Yeah. You can, you can, you can learn a lot about someone from their, from their office decor. Like the most bizarre sales call I ever was on. We went into this office and they brought us back to their conference room and they very clearly only invited us to try and sell to us. We, we were under the impression that we were going there for a coffee. They viol This is part of the reason why I make my, make sure that all of my first meetings are neutral locations. Cause I never want anyone to feel like that they're being pressured to buy. Yeah. They invite us to their office. They sit us in the conference room, which is a tiny little closet on the far end of the table. So the only escape is to get up, sidestep, suck in your gut, and walk all the way around the conference table and through them again. So it really felt like there was no escape. Oh, that's at, so awkward. At one point, I felt like, oh, my God, am I going to either have to buy from them or jump out the window? Uh, and here's the most bizarre decoration setup. You could tell that these were people who perception of knowledge was more important than knowledge itself. They had, they didn't have books and bookshelves. They had framed pictures of leather bound books. Oh my God. That is the most obnoxious thing I've ever heard. That's like, that's like on Bojack Horseman when Mr. Peanut Butter, like Diane says she wants a library at home. So he builds her a library, but all the books are fake because he thought she just wanted it to look like a library. Like that's what, that's what that reminds me of. I need to watch that show. It sounds like a really clever show. It's so funny, dude. It's super clever. Yeah. I would highly I recommend it. There's absolutely something there. I mean, what's more important? The the outcome that we're looking for or the perception of it? Right, yeah. Is, like like perception is, is reality. Is it better to be healthy or to be perceived as healthy, a.k.a. look incredibly fit? Is it better to be smart or perceived as smart? Is it better to be successful or perceived as, or maybe successful is not the right one? Wealthy or perceived as wealthy? That's interesting because sometimes when you're perceived a certain way, it can help perpetuate it, right? Like the like business guru. Make it till you make it. They, Exactly. They just are perceived as, as wealthy and smart. And so then they can sell courses and then they become actually wealthy and successful because of that. But there's no actual value put out into the world. There's no actual like, like there's no value for any customer. It's like MLMs, right? It's like the idea that it's more, everything is focused more on the person selling than on the person buying or what the end product even is. And here's sort of the point, because I see Cher say, I would rather people not know if I were rich. I get that. And I feel like most people who have money would agree with you. But my point is what sort of like has long, if, if, if attention is the most important currency, um, which at this point in time, it almost feels like it is given it the is. certain, given different circumstances. And let's just say hypothetically that the dollar depreciates. Um, so your, 
your static money is worth less and less by the day because you're not you're, maybe you're not investing it or maybe you just don't have the set, set amount of income you or, or I, I don't know it could be any number of reasons but let's just say you're becoming less wealthy by the day what lasts longer money or the perception of wealth which can then perpetuate more money coming to you um and i'm not trying to say that this is something that we should all pursue this is me saying these are the dangers with these fucking assholes mm -hmm. absolutely so yeah this whole like he's got all these books on the shelf over here but like are these even books like these just look like cardboard cutouts of books <laughs> questionable Maybe. hag Maybe they're real books. I don't know. We'll see. I can't have real books. I had to buy 10,000 so I could be on the New York Times bestseller. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I still sell today, by the way. Okay. Like there's no, there's no, you know, it's very direct to yeah, the point. Shit. Find out if you're interested and then I move on. So if someone's not interested, in other words, I, yeah. one of the things oh, I know about- the best I, part, I mean, the, the whole not interested thing. I think this is the highlight of the whole podcast. I'll wait till RK is back because this, this is pretty amazing. Right now I'm writing my, I forgot, I forgot to write my goal in my to-do list in my planner that what I want to do is reach out to 10 potential uh, YouTube or Instagram to sponsor per day. I'm trying to reach out to 10 per day. That means I need to compile a list. That means I need to put that in my Google calendar. Oh man, I've got so much in my calendar already today. That's okay. That's okay. I got a 10 exit. Um, I'll just put that reach, reach out to 10 YouTube, Instagram. And then hopefully I can do that in the morning tomorrow before, um, I'll put that to do that tomorrow morning as well. So hopefully I actually get that done. Got that in the Google calendar. Uh, Y'all, while RK is away before we continue this podcast, fun uh, fun fact, today at uh, I have a video premiering in an hour and a half, if anyone wants, there we go, is Classically Abby Secretly a Feminist. This is a video I've got premiering today at, um, in, in 86 minutes, according to this. So if you guys want to join me for a video premiere this morning. We're going to discuss, uh, react to and discuss classically Abby's um, video, Don't Let Feminists Control Your Life, and talk about how her understanding of feminism, she might actually be one without realizing it, right? So, well, that's what we're going to talk about. So if you guys want to see another classically Abby video, uh, that this is going to be premiering in an hour and a half. So you can join me there. That freezer has <laughs> <laughs> Queen of Spades, that freeze frame is killing me. Oh my god, look, look at his face. Yeah, we always talk about, we always talk about people who have the special power where they're photogenic enough that even when you you pause in the middle of them talking, they still look really amazing. Like we have a few friends who we've seen their face freeze on stream in the middle of it, and it's like, wow, you still look great. That's amazing. Uh, I'm not one of those people. Jordan Belfort is clearly not one of those people because his face is like. <laughs> um hey you're back sorry just finishing reading this one oh that's fine we'll wrap this up in a second i just wanted to show you this part about th this is like the best thing you know, listen, I, I, I did a little bit of checking, right? Yeah, Not yeah, that yeah, much, yeah. right? And by the way, you know, the reason I don't do checking is because I don't want to, like, so many, you know, there's people steal so much shit out there, right? Uh -huh. I mean, there's all these false gurus and people, the experts of the of the hour, right? Yeah, yeah. So I, I don't make it a habit of trying to go through other people's stuff. I feel like then I'll adopt it as my own. Yeah, either yeah. rightly, not, sometimes yeah. I didn't realize that you took it from someone else. Exactly. Right? So, yeah, yeah, yeah. so, so well, my shit's so good, dude. If you watch it, you <laughs> will use it again. What's you can't not use what's it. The, well, look, really? Okay, good. Well, oh, what's, no, what's the stuff that being unreasonable? Like when you say, if you want to just be unreasonable with like not stop, yeah. but what if they don't want it? What's the, what's the, what's the fine uh, line? Oh, you Wait. saw the unreasonable, you're, you're like fo the follow-up, the, 
No, 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 no. I mean, like, okay, so you have two types of people. You have buyers and non-buyers, right? Like, what do you mean? No, I don't believe that. I, I think they're all buyers. You think everyone's no, a buyer? No, 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 Every- he thinks everyone's a buyer. He's like, you have buyers and non-buyers. And Grant's like, uh, no, everyone's a buyer. Everyone's a buyer. Every human being you meet is going to buy. I have diabetes. Yeah. They, you they might not buy my fish, but then they're going to buy insurance or they're going to buy groceries. Or they're all buyers. But what? You're selling fish, though. In that case, I was selling fish, but that does not make them a non-buyer. Of fish, though, that don't. day, that <laughs> moment. No, that they second. don't. They don't. My point is, from t- technically, every buyer's, every buyer's a buyer. Okay, so you all don't... I'm looking for is money anyway. Every seller's looking for something. They're looking for money. They don't want to keep what they have. They're looking for money. So you don't think? Okay, so I think sl- every buyer's a buyer. Slow it down for one second, right? Slow it down for a second. You speak. You speak almost as fast as me. Slow you're on the down. Red Bull. I'm not. Question. Okay, yeah, so if yeah. you're a salesman, young salesman out in the field, let's say you're selling <laughs> yeah. insurance, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. And let's say you knock on someone's door, and say, "I'm not interested in insurance." I understand. Would you keep pushing and pushing? Of course, right? sell insurance. Oh, but 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 I do. I don't believe that they're not. Not interested is an interest level. Okay. <laughs> not interested is better than before you hit that door and they said they weren't interested. Yeah, so with the whole quote where he's like, "Not interested is an interest level." I was editing that clip into the video where his wife was talking about how he stalked her and how she was not interested in him, but he called her twice a month for over a year. And it was just him being like, not interested is a level of interest. And he even applies that to his dating life. When women are not interested in them, he assumes that that's a level of interest. Not interest. Like no interest is a level of interest. Okay. Like if I have no coffee in my house, I'm talking about coffee. Okay. (laughs) Zero. None is a quantity. Time for the wolf to do his thing. Okay, I'm going to sell okay. you something. No, no, no ad. No ad. We'll stop there for today. But I just want a little not interested is a level of interest. Which, again, it's like it's it's the whole taking a baseline idea and completely yeah. perverting it. When he said it's better off getting that no, which I know he didn't say exactly, but that was sort of what he said. I do agree to an extent. It's better to, yeah. to, to pitch someone, get the no, and then move on. But then yeah. he just completely ruins it by continuing to talk. Yeah, it's like basically like, yeah, because it's like when he's asked, like, if you were, if you, if the person said they were not interested, like, what you said is true that, like, if someone, if you knock on someone's door and they're not interested and you move on to the next thing, it's better that you at least tried with that person than you didn't try at all. But the way Grant's taking it is like, this person says they're not interested. So I'm going to continue pushing it on them in every way possible because not interested is a level of interest, which means there's a zero level of interest. And we need to bring that up to a number one level of interest. And that's what he did with his wife. And like, dude, that's, that's nuts. Is he going to base his entire life off of one exception to a rule? I guess. I mean, he's pretty rich, so maybe there's something to it, but he's also like a terrible human being. So like, can you imagine if I lost weight one day from eating nothing but candy and I was like, holy shit, candy's the healthiest thing in the world. I'm going to lose so much weight and I just dedicate the rest of my life. To I mean, there are milk. actually like crash diets like that. That's like, this is the cookie diet. All you eat is cookies, but it's like you eat two cookies a day for months and you end up eating like 500 calories a day because you're eating exclusively cookies and no real food and you would probably die, but it's, you still lose weight. The Devil Wears Prada diet. Well, it's not really a diet. I just don't eat anything. And when I feel like I'm about to faint, I have one cube of cheese. (laughs) Oh, God. So, y'all, probably wrap this stream up for today because we've been on here for a while. But uh, we'll be back again tomorrow morning. What, What were your thoughts on the first day of living as Grant Cardone? So because he doesn't actually give like specific advice on how to live your morning, I had a fantastic morning. Waking up at six was incredibly easy. Uh, Reading the paper was a good way to sort of get my morning started. The only thing I think I'd like to do tomorrow is uh, I didn't get a chance to read nonfiction this morning. And I think I want to get back to doing at least 15 minutes of reading nonfiction before the stream. But it's because I replaced it with doing a TikTok video. Yeah. Yeah. I think um, for me waking, well, since we were waking up, like waking up at six would have felt awful to me if we hadn't spent all of last week waking up at five. But since we woke up at five every day last week, waking up at six felt just fine. So I woke up at six uh, and that was good. It was, it's like, it's the same thing with Rachel. I think all the gurus do this. It's nice to do your workout in the morning um, because then you have the rest of the day to do other things. Although I do get tired the rest of the day. So that kind of sucks. Um, But, and then also to like the writing down goals thing to get my whole day kind of organized in the morning was helpful. Um, I spent more than two minutes with Chewy, but that's because I am a better dog parent than Grant is an actual parent. 
<laughs> you don't see Chewie as an adult. I don't see Chewie as an adult. Actually, Get Tyler tells food. me he tells me I should see Chewie as an adult more because he's an adult dog, but I'm always calling him a puppy and telling him he's a cute baby. Chewie needs to get a job and pay rent. Chewie, Chewie uh, needs to get a job. <laughs> a Chewie can be a dog walker. <laughs> I mean, he already walks. Why not? Yeah, he just needs Why to not make the... money doing it? <laughs> he, he needs to Monetize flirt with the cute poodle life. next door who said that she's not interested in walker. Put her leash in his mouth and walk her. That dude, Wrigley actually does that sometimes. Like, I have videos, like, of when we have Wrigley and Chewie at Christmas. Wrigley likes to walk other dogs. So, um, like, we would be getting both of them in their leash for a walk, and Wrigley would pick up Chewie's leash in her in her mouth and try to walk him. And then we would try to be like, no, Wrigley, the humans have to walk the dogs. And she would be like, no. And she'd, like, clamp down on it. Like, no, I'm walking I am Chewie. human. I am human. <laughs> dogs are so cute. Grant Cardone needs a dog in his life. I think that'll make him a better person. Or maybe not. Maybe I wouldn't trust him with a dog. I don't know. Maybe a self-reliant dog. Kitty says, great morning stream. I'm off to do some yoga and 10x everything on my to-do list today. Yes. Yes, guys. So remember, 10x everything today. We're going to 10x everything all week. Uh, on Friday, we are going to be reviewing the book, The 10x Rule, that Grant Cardone wrote because we have both been reading it. And uh, other than that, I have a video premiere today uh, in an hour and 20 minutes. It is about Classically Abbey, so hopefully you guys will enjoy that. Um, we'll see you again tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. Central, like every day of every week until the end of time. If you want to watch replays, you can watch replays on YouTube, on Twitch, or on Spotify, though the Spotify episodes go up a couple days later. So, uh, yeah. Anyway, we'll see y'all again tomorrow. Don't forget to support small businesses. Bye, friends.